<coughs> well, hey kids, welcome back. Here we are at the big board looking at last, <laughs> there it is again, less than 60 miles. And I thought what we might do is try and walk through a, uh, a combat. And the idea would be that, uh, the idea would be that this is a combat where you probably wouldn't use everything I am going to show you that I used, but I used it all in order to get a feel for how all the different combat support points and elements would potentially work together to give us the, the understanding of how the mechanics work. So this is somewhat of an overkill, but it is nevertheless some uh, or it is everything, potentially everything anyway, that you can do in a combat to bring firepower to both the offense and all the defense. So the very first thing, just to kind of get you caught up, <clears throat> there's uh, the uh, 111 is here in Fulda, at the edge of Fulda behind the river. The bridge is blown and they fired a uh, arty uh, strike or missile strike at this uh, unit here, which half engaged this uh, tank uh, regiment the 15th guard, and they came in, nevertheless, came in, used forced march to get there. They were under strict orders to make sure that they attacked the forces by, uh, you know, uh, sometime before noon on uh, day zero. So they are doing that, and they succeeded in their attrition role, so they didn't have to take any losses there, which was nice, but they had already accumulated uh, one uh for something else, which I forget. Uh, they, uh, these, this unit moved up first, then this guy moved up, and he uh, he took an attrition point crossing, uh, no, he did not take an attrition point crossing the river, but he used force march to get across the river from here to here. Uh, this is a screening, this unit is in a screening posture, and so it's an extra two movement points here, an extra two movement points here, plus two for the river, uh, You've got to roll for attrition when you cross the river because they were doing a hasty crossing. So that uh, that was dangerous, but it uh, succeeded. In actual fact, they did take an attrition point loss there. That is correct. So these forces are all arrayed to support this attack. Not happy with just, just that. I just bit my tongue. Dang it. Oh. <laughs> all right. That's what I get for trying to talk clearly to you. I should just mumble. Uh, I am going to, uh, what I am going to do is, so, so walk you through this. So let's, let's do that. The first thing we do, this guy has five factors. Oh, that's the first mistake I made. I've already found one error. There we go. Because uh, I did eight versus five instead of eight versus six. So that's one little error that will, that will net out somewhere along the way. We'll do that. So it's going to be eight versus six. It's going to put these guys at a plus two. I'm going to should make a little note here that it's plus two. So that should end up being a 17. All right. Uh, and so we're going to use our, so that's going to be a plus two differential uh, on the combat results table. Before we get to that combat re results table, though, we are going to layer in some air. So the Americans bring some air support. The Soviets bring some air support. And for each point they bring, it's going to give us two CSP. But they have to undergo AA first. Both sides lose a step, uh, a step of boards. So that reduces the net air that gets into the battle. Both sides bring helicopters in. You know, Apaches and Hines into the combat. And... They will have to take, when they're used, they will have to uh, take an attrition step. And they will also take one if they suffer a result for AA as well. So these guys are actually both going to go up to two, I believe. That's how that works. And this guy here will go up to two. And, and I think you only, I'm only taking one loss. So I'm going to put just the usage on this guy. And the reason why I can do this is because I have these guys in the posture called FARP, which is basically some sort of air support role, supporting air role with the choppers, right? They can reach out and give you some love 
or they can reach out and, and be involved in the attack. So those guys, their factors go in as uh, as combat support points, and we're going to tally up each side's points, and then we're going to subtract them from each other. One of the other neat things we can do is that we can use uh, artillery, and if we use rockets, and I want to pay two attrition points, I can use double the strength. Why not? So we'll do that, right? So we're going to fire eight factors into there. So we're building up a big delta here. Uh, we're going to put in six arty points. So we're going all out, right? We're going to just put the arty in there as well. And we give them an attrition point accumulation as well. The headquarters is within range because he's now deployed. We moved him before we did this attack. And he is now deployed. He paid his movement points. And we're going to use two electronic warfare points. And we're going to go to the electronic warfare table. And I'm going to find that here real quickly. Flip over the page. EW. Uh, so the Soviet cell, Warsaw Pact, have two points. They have to subtract one from their die roll <coughs> for uh, their results. Just because I guess their EW ain't as good as uh, the NATO's. And I believe we ended up with a net uh, die roll of a four, which is no results. So there was no effect. The uh, Americans, uh, NATO forces, however, rolled an eight and they get a plus one and went up to a nine. So they're gonna get a minus two benefit for their electronic warfare, which was allocated to fifth core here and it's in its supporting role here. So that, that point's gonna get used there. This point's gonna get used there. And I think they come off the board. And that, that's also reflected in the tracks, which are over there. You can't see them in detail, but there's tracks over there. They keep track of air points, command points, um, air and other bits and pieces. I, I think I already mentioned that. So, all right. So there's that. So it's all this melange of things that are being accumulated here. And... We're going to add all that up. And let me just make sure that with this result, this combat result. Oh, that's right. I did. Uh, no, that's right. So then we go, we go to the, we get this total number of attack combat support points and total number of defender combat support points. So I, I'm correcting myself here. And the attacker combat support, we add up how many there are. And I believe we had a net of, uh, where are we here now? A net of, hang on one second. Okay, yes. So I'm just trying to give you the total here, make sure I've got it correct. So I think the final combat support points uh, allocated for the defender was in the, it was a five, six column and uh, CSP for the attacker was in the nine column. And is that right? Yes, nine column. Oh, it can't be right because of the eight factors for the missiles. So eight factors there. Yes, so that meant, that's right, we were in the 11 to 12 column. And unfortunately, with that die roll, I only, I rolled low and I only got a plus two. So, and the defending combat, the defenders also roll for their combat support. They did not roll well either, and they only got a minus one out of all this. And I think the net after terrain, because we've got uh, attacking across a river here, and they're in a city, that's going to be a minus six. Once we go through all of these factors, we're going to end up with uh, this combat being on the plus seven table. And I rolled a nine. And that got us to an O2 result. No, wrong, wrong column. Yes, an O2 result. That's right. Okay, O2 result. So that is a combat. Now, what happens, right? What happens there? O2 result means that the attacker does not take any losses, but the defender will. This goes back to its its uh, base, these guys go back to their base. They've all got uh, attrition accumulated. So we can put them somewhere safe. And I've got two here. Now, 
what these guys can do to reduce their attrition by one is they can try and disengage and uh, just I'll tell you how many attrition points they have available to them before they die if I can find it real quickly for you you can bear with me it's a battalion they're gonna have four attrition points so they're 50% of the way towards being not in a good place so I think we will, in fact, try and disengage. And so we're going to go to the, I'm just looking for the table here, disengagement table, here we go. And this is pretty nifty here. So being in screening mode uh, is very, is helpful for trying to disengage because you're, you know, dispersed and all this sort of good stuff. So uh, we look at it, so let's see, blah, 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 each, each, uh, his, and then there are some modifiers for this, right? Each uh, adjacent hex after the first with enemy combat units. So it's going to be minus one. Each adjacent hex with friendly combat. No, there's none. Uh, so it's actually going to be there's two. So there's going to be minus two. There's, here's the first one and there's two more. So there's two. Um, unit was not half engaged. It wasn't engaged or delayed. It is in a town. It's in a city hex. It's going to give me plus two. So that's going to negate the benefit of the enemy uh, additional forces there. So we're down to a zero. Uh, all adjacent enemy combat units are behind a minor river. No, they're not. I am in a minor defensive works or in a defensive works hex. That's going to be a plus one. And... Let's see, plus one, and I know screening does something for me, and why can't I see that? Let me let me flip really quickly to the screening mode. The screening, 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 uh, bombardment. I thought screening mode was supposed to give me some bonus here. I'm not seeing it. Let me just double check something real quick. I'm going to pause you here for a second. Oh yeah, here it is here. I found it. Uh, there's a unit unit types, and these guys are armored cavalry. That's what's going to give them the benefit. Ah, and here it is, and here's screening as well. So, all right. So here's what's going to happen. I'll show you the I'll show you the table. Uh, we'll zoom out a little bit first of all. So here's the armored cav column. I'm going to roll the die against, and here is if I'm in screening or recon mode, uh, I'm going to roll on this column here. So I'm going to roll the die. And I think I'm going to add one to it. I roll a four plus one is a five. Uh, and I, so a four plus one, did I say five? All right, so what I probably would have wanted to do there is to provide uh, some sort of support for that unit, thrown in some combat support to get it up one. But nevertheless, what this will do is allow me to retreat and leave that hex. So we'll take the screening marker with us and we'll take the unit and we'll leave the defensive works behind. But I'm gonna to have to, because of the result, I'm gonna to have to add a attrition point. But because I successfully escaped, I'm gonna to get to reduce it by one. So it's a net wash. I, I, don't get to, uh, I don't get to escape and reduce my losses, but I do get to escape. So we'll, re we'll retreat that unit. I've gotta look up exactly how far it goes, but we can do that in a minute. I just thought I'd show you that. That's a full on combat. I know I kind of ran around the terrain effects and little and bits and pieces, but it's literally incredibly straightforward. You look at the uh, ground combat tables, you look at the, uh, uh, the electronic warfare table and roll the dice for that one. I'm just trying to find where the, uh, I've got my, my charts all flipped around here. Uh, you look at the modes for each formation, what, what the defensive mode is going to be. So uh, being in screening mode, it's plus three to the combat for, it's actually a benefit to the attacker, right? Negative numbers are beneficial for the, uh, are beneficial for defense and positive numbers are beneficial for, it, for the attack. And these guys are in march mode, march assault mode. So they get a, they get a plus four for, for their 
defensive benefit so you see that's not real good for them and they're not particularly good on the attack either but it's a, a compromise formation so uh, as the soviets and the soviets enjoy being in that formation and it's also the gives them the ability to move relatively quickly and attack. So that kind of gives you a feel for the posture, the terrain, the combat support points. And we add all those combat support points up for each side. And then we roll on a table and see how many net points we're gonna to add to each uh, the attacker and defender rating. And then work out what the differential is and roll for the result. And the results are generally going to be, you know, an attrition point for one side, or the other, or both, as the case might be. All right, took a little bit longer than I thought, but nevertheless, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you soon.